it's still broken dice for me another little installment in my solo war gaming campaign rome's invasion of the iberian peninsula this time they'll be going up the, against the lay of um so let's uh move on and we will talk about some of the changes i'm going to use to try to speed up these games a little bit all right i'm going to modify the uh hail caesar rules a little bit because um when you're doing solo war game, sometimes you just want the pace to be a little bit quicker. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the two die six roll with a single die 12. One less dice to roll. Uh, the math is a little bit different, but not so much. I don't think it's going to change the game. But I also want to leave in the opportunity for a blunder. So, and as you know, in Hail Caesar, if you roll a 12, on two dice six, you have a blunder roll and you go to a chart and you roll that off to see what happens. So what we're gonna do in this is uh, I'm gonna take the distance modifier for rolls for order because I want my orders to go through. So there's not gonna be any failed orders, but I'm also going to increase the chance for a blunder by using those distance modifiers and this is what I mean so say uh, you're outside of that 12 inch mark for a blunder so a normal blunder even if you're within range is on a 12 but if you go outside that say you're at 15 inches away from your commander your units are your furthest unit is uh, so now you blunder on 11 or 12 if you move outside of that say you're you're at 24 to you know or say 28 inches away that furthest unit now all of a sudden you're you're down at a 10 or 11 or 12 for a blunder to happen to happen so with this i think the rules are it's going to uh speed the game along it's going to keep that more interesting thing so no matter what no matter what you roll something is going to happen that turn with that unit you won't have like one of those divisions that just sits there and does nothing at all Okay, so how do I'm going? How am I going to figure out how they do their orders? So if I'm just rolling the die 12 and all the rolls are are going to be automatic anyway, so we're basically rolling for blunder, in in blunder, not blender. <laughs> um, so I'm going to roll a die three along with that die 12, and so therefore we'll have basically a random order. Uh, of success so I may always succeed but I don't know I'm never going to know by how much so that's going to be that randomness placed back in the game so yes I may not roll a blunder but I may in turn only move one instead of just failing an order and nothing happens at all for that division so we're going to see how this plays out in, in this turn or round of my solo war game. I'm going, to, I'm going to do this through this entire thing, uh, try to see how that works out, and if I like it, I'll keep it in, and if I don't, and if people have some other suggestions or they think it's really horrible or just the side of blasphemy, then they can leave a comment down below and, and let me know. All right, so let's get on to what's going on here. All right, so the Laetani have a little territory that's kind of north and east on the peninsula heading back toward the pyrenees now the romans valued those uh, mountain passes in the pyrenees greatly because as everyone knows that studies anything about the mediterranean and ancient naval warfare and movement at all in the winter time it was foolhardy if not impossible to to move large armies by sea so they needed those passes open they needed to be able to march from italy through Gaul and then down into the Iberian Peninsula. All right, so here we go. We're, we're going to get into this so with limited troops available at hand. The local chiefs prepared to ambush the Roman foraging parties in hope of slowing down the legion, the legions. So that's exactly what's going to happen here. We're going to play as a little ambush scenario. All right, uh, so these uh, foraging units, which would probably be just uh, something less than a division within the Hail Caesar army. So now I'm going to use a division for the Iberians and a division for the um, foragers, the Roman foragers. And I'm proxying a lot of my Greek light infantry 
to simulate uh, maybe some legionnaires who have left their heavy equipment and only taken some sword javelin and shield with them to help you know because they got to you know carry grain put it on carts herd animals you know there's a lot to be done and you can't be encumbered with a lot of uh, heavy armor so more than half of this force will probably it is light infantry and the same with the Iberian force uh, going to use uh, a lot of light infantry, fast moving uh, whatever these guys had at hand to just to try to to slow these Romans down a bit okay Iberian order phase of turn one obviously is an ambush they attack now the uh, the important thing is that choosing the ground for an ambush is important so with this scenario i've set up a ford around a little river and then we let half the romans cross and then we rolled for orders to see how far they would go or if there were blunders so everybody uh the, the infantry on the far on the left of the screen that are our bearings where the brown arrow is they only moved one movement where the cavalry moved three all right the romans crossing the ford the ford is that piece that sits between those two large rocks that's the way it's indicated on the table and here we go all right this shows the rest of that uh iberian movement uh, the unit at the top right it was 20 i want to say it's like 26 inches away so that was a negative two on, on the, the uh, blunder. So that put it down to a 10. So they rolled a 10 on the blunder chart and they did the thing where they just shifted to the right. So they shifted into, luckily they're open order light infantry. And so they shifted into some uh, difficult terrain. And the rest of the, uh, the cavalry, and there's a, there is a small unit of skirmishers right there at the bend of the river. Uh, they moved along with the cavalry. All right, yeah, here we go. This points out the uh, the unit that blundered. So this is what's going to happen a lot of times. Uh, um, and there's a I want to do a little uh, backtrack here on the on these orders. It's like I was reading through the book, and there was something I did wrong in several of my other games that I've done, and I don't know why I forgot this, but even when you're doing a division order if a if you're giving an order to several troops and and say because uh, you can be six inches apart so if you have four units you you can be in that 24 inch range or fairly close to it away from uh your commander so the possibility of a of a blunder the way i'm doing it now uh, increases dramatically for a division so that's what's happened up here and they did that shift right <laughs> into some difficult terrain all right on the right hand side of the iberians or top left of the photo um you can see where they uh the infantry have moved the iberian on the iberian turn one and the cavalry had oh i'm sorry i said three but it was actually only two moves and you can see that the iberian commander is up in the woodlands right behind the cavalry all right turn one orders phase a lot going on here all right a uh, roman commander issues orders for the uh roman infantry to turn and face the cavalry and and counter charge um or charge them in their turn uh the slingers at the bottom have gotten two moves and the uh light infantry uh escorting some uh ill-gotten gains they're foraging uh some some uh livestock and they they've uh passed their orders to get two moves and if you can see the rest of the uh what i'm allowing the rest of the column to do that's heading towards the ford uh to make if the order is failed for any reason uh they always get to make one move so we don't need to really roll for that all you have to do is roll for a blunder to see if they would do anything so there was no blunder roll, but they always get to make one. 
All right, here we can see the movement of the skirmishers and of the uh, cohort, which is at the top right of the screen. They didn't quite make it to the Iberian cavalry. Um, yeah, I, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be bad. But you can see here in the uh, middle of the screen the light infantry with the livestock behind them. That's how I'm doing the uh, the uh, foraging points basically. So in this, if for every uh, uh, base of uh, livestock that the uh, Iberians are able to take away from the Romans, <coughs> one. One Roman unit in the next game will be at negative one in uh, stamina. And that way, that way we have a direct reflection on supply and ability. All right. So that's basically why we're we're doing this campaign, uh, this battle this way. All right. This gives another view. This is a uh, kind of a side view from. Uh, coming down the river and you can see the light, uh, the skirmishing infantry in the woods, uh, the two cavalry units that have charged down off the hill and the cohort to the top left, along with the rest of the Roman forces moving out to meet the uh, Iberian light infantry. All right, Iberian orders phase turn two, the two units of Iberian cavalry charge the Roman cohort supported by the skirmishers in the woods. Uh, yeah, here's another picture. I'm, I should have had this one a little bit earlier on. Uh, that way you just see it, the same sort of setup that we saw earlier, but just from the other side. Okay, these um, show that this the, the cavalry unit behind cannot legally face up with this cohort along with the other cavalry unit because their frontage is too wide. So that second cavalry unit will have to support along with the skirmishers towards the woods and the river. And the Iberian right flank advances two moves. There we go. Okay, the Iberian light infantry engaged in shooting with the Roman light infantry. Uh, the Romans suffer a break test and give ground disordered. Uh, the Iberian cavalry tried to overwhelm the Roman court. Now, I really thought, you know, with uh, a charge from the cavalry, uh, their supporting unit, two supporting units, they at least would have held their own and, uh, oops, spoiler, uh, would have held their own and even pushed the, the Roman infantry back because I really thought this is what, what was going to turn, pan out in this turn. But it didn't. The Iberian skirmishers take, take one point of damage, but they fail their test miserably and they fall back. The Iberian cavalry that, that initiated the charge that were, was in front-to-front -front combat with this unit, they broke from the battlefield after only suffering two bits of damage. But, you know, when you roll the dice for break, you roll the dice for break. And the Iberian cavalry that was uh, giving support, they give ground and they are disordered. All right, here you can see the how this has turned out. Uh, and the kind of the top right center, you can see the uh, Roman light infantry falling back from the skirmishers of the, uh, from the Iberians. And you can see where the Iberian cavalry that was in support has fallen back in disorder. And yes, the other cavalry unit is gone along with the skirmishers. Now, that's a big deal. I mean, they did a couple of damage points to that Roman cohort, but really, I was, I was amazed that they, that that cavalry unit and the skirmishers both broke so quickly. Right. End of Iberian turn two. This kind of gives you the setup for what the Romans are going to face. They got one Ro Roman light infantry that has been pushed back in their disorder. The uh, cohort, which is the most dangerous unit on this side of the ford, is still intact and uh, quite capable. We have a uh, disordered cavalry unit for the Iberians. It's really not looking good on this side. I really thought that, you know, the, you know, but that's why we roll the dice. That's why we play the game to see how these fortunes change throughout, throughout the game. And, and no matter, 
uh, what our plans and our setup is until you roll the dice. You never know how it's going to turn out. All right, let's go to the Romans orders phase. And you see the little red arrows there. That shows all the units that are charging. Now, <clears throat> obviously, skirmishers cannot charge formed units. So the uh, slingers are going to charge the uh, uh, Iberian skirmishers because basically they're both skirmishing units. And the Roman light infantry that are behind the skirmishers, they're going to move through and charge the uh, Iberian light infantry as well. And then the Roman cohort is again going to charge the remaining cavalry unit. Yeah, this is probably not going to be good for the, for the uh, Iberians. Sorry to say. Yeah, the Roman infantry made short work of them, although <clears throat> not so much damage was done. I, the rolls were horrible, but they did enough to make them uh, fall back in disorder. So how that works if, if, if a, hmm. oh, a roll through had to take a little drink. Um, so that cavalry unit was disordered on the turn that they charged, okay? So at the end of their turn, they, the disorder should have come on. But they were charged, and then they were placed in disorder again in, in the Roman part. So they will have to wait until the end of their next turn before that disorder can, can come on. Uh, that leaves an awful lot of freedom for that uh, Roman cohort in uh, moving around and doing some damage. Now, the Roman infantry obviously couldn't keep pace with the Iberian cavalry to stay in contact after winning the combat. So this is going to change up how things happen. And then right down here, you can see one of the markers for the uh, uh, foragers. All right, Roman infantry charged the Iberian light infantry. Uh, the Roman slingers charged the Iberian skirmishers. That's hilarious. Those uh, slingers broke the uh, Iberian skirmishers in combat. <laughs> I find that funny. And then the uh, Iberian light infantry were able to push back the Roman light infantry, making them drop their two forage markers, the, the livestock markers that they were carrying. Because if you're forced to give ground, you can no longer hold on to your uh, uh, livestock, and that goes for being disordered as well. Because you're just not organized enough to keep track of all of them, so they just wander on. All right. All right, this brings us to the end of rounds one, turns one and two for both the Romans and the Iberians. Uh, it seems like uh, disaster has struck the Iberians. We'll see if the they can uh, make some recovery, but they'll need to have some a tremendous amount of luck on their side and, and turn three. But that's why we roll the dice to see what happens. A lot of a lot of troops coming across the uh, <clears throat> before there for the Romans, um, and with two units gone from the Iberian, especially most the most damaging is being that cavalry unit. Uh, very surprising in, in turn two, losing that so early. Um, well, that's it for this uh, video. Uh, if everybody likes it, again, give me a thumbs up. Got questions, put them in the comments down below. Uh, if you want to find out more about uh, why I'm doing it, leave, leave some questions, uh, leave a message, and uh, I'll answer it the best I can. But again, like I said, I'm kind of experimenting with some things to speed up the game, speed up the video process, and having just more fun with it. Uh, if it doesn't work out in the long run, then we'll just go back to being strictly by the book, as it were. So everybody stay safe, stay well, and I will see you next time.